having a needle like this long going in my back freaked me out. Hey guys, Megan here with Nappy Hour with a Mom, and today I want to talk to you about my experience giving birth naturally versus with an epidural. <laughs> start with my epidural experience because that is how my first labor uh, went. My daughter came at 38 weeks naturally like my water broke at home. Um, it wasn't as traumatic as the way you see it on like TV shows or anything. It was just sort of like three in the morning and I went to go pee and I just kept peeing on myself. <laughs> I was like what is happening and then I just clicked and I was like I think my water broke. So my husband jumped out of bed and we headed to the hospital. To the hospital, everything was kind of going pretty slow um, at first. And then for some reason, they decided to give me Pitocin. That I think is something that, which I hear a lot of moms talk about, but I think Pitocin is the reason why my contractions started to get worse and hard very fast. Um, but the thing is, is if your water is already broken, you basically have like 24 hours before that you need to have the baby because you risk infection, which obviously can be life threatening to the baby and you. And so that's why they wanted to like speed up the process. But my body reacted so quickly to the Pitocin. Well, I started having these really hard contractions and I was a new mom, was not prepared for childbirth at all. And so I decided I wanted to have an epidural. Honestly, the epidural was so scary. <laughs> I think the thought of having a needle like this long going in my back freaked me out more than pushing an actual human being out of the birth canal. <laughs> Had the epidural and honestly, the needle, like they numb you really well. I didn't feel the needle. I just sort of felt pressure in my back. The anesthesiologist was like, I'm um, about to put a needle this long in your back. Just made me like stay very still. <laughs> so I think that was his way to like get me to relax. But at the same time, I was freaking out and I was crying. And he was not nice. He basically told me, If you're crying like this, how are you going to handle when it's time for you to push? Which I was not very happy about. Like, my daughter was born on a holiday and maybe that's why. Like, it was his day off and. He was not happy to be coming in. My daughter was the only baby born that day in our hospital until around midnight, <laughs> you know? Anyway, some of the experiences I had with the staff were wonderful because she was the only baby and then some were not. So I had my epidural and I can tell you like, after I had the epidural, the first thing I felt was sleepy. I was extremely tired. And I just remember sleeping for like three hours. I don't even know how long I was asleep. I was just really out of it um, until like I did start to feel a little bit of pressure. So this was probably about seven hours after initially we got to the hospital at four. I got that epidural probably, I would say like eight, nine in the morning. Um, and then my daughter actually was born at 12. So backing up, when I started to feel that pressure, the nurse checked me and was like, yeah, you're at a 10, it's time for you to push. But I really didn't feel like I needed to push. Like, I mean, I felt pressure, but nothing that was like the baby's coming, which was a very different experience with my natural birth, which I'll share in a minute. Um, so the nurse was basically just like, they grabbed my legs and it was time to push. They had to do everything because like, I couldn't move my legs. I couldn't feel my legs. And so they just basically told me to push. And then when I was pushing, I could feel the pressure of her coming out. And that was basically it. After she was born, you know, they took her, uh, I nursed her a little bit and then they took her and cleaned her up. And then it was my turn to like, get up. They have to remove the catheter. So when you have an epidural, you do have to have a catheter because you can't feel your legs. You can't get up to go pee. Um, and so they removed the catheter. I. Um, had to go to the bathroom. Well, first of all, my legs felt so shaky. I was so scared to get up. I just thought I was gonna fall. Um, and that was basically it. Like as far as like the feelings from the epidural afterward. So my pros when it comes to the epidural is you don't feel any pain. <laughs> 
like at least that was my experience i've heard horror stories of people getting the epidural and they still feel pain again every woman is different every mom is going to experience labor differently but for me i didn't feel any pain the anesthesiologist knew what he was doing i guess um and i just i didn't feel anything but pressure another pro with the epidural i feel like is that um things go like I, like I said while well, I go relax like as at a very slow relaxed pace and for me that was kind of nice like I just got to like chill out and sleep and talk to my husband and my family those would be like my big two pros um, so now I'm gonna get into the cons so my major cons of the epidural um, number one is that I didn't know like when to push so I was just sort of at the disposal of the nurses that were helping me, the labor and delivery nurses um, and the doctor. I just didn't really know what to do as a first time mom. Another con, and many people have probably heard this, is that I did have back pain. So after I had my daughter, I did have back pain um, later on. Now I had back pain since I was like 13. So it could just made the back pain I already had worse, but I did feel like in the area on my spine and my back where I had the epidural, I did feel pain and still kind of feel some pain to this day. Final con for me was the catheter. I did not like having to have a catheter. It was not pleasant. Um, it's just weird <laughs> and I, you know, not being able to go get up and go to the bathroom, um, having to rely on the catheter was just not something that I liked. One more con that I'm going to slide in because I forgot was when you have an epidural, you have a longer recovery. So you have to take things a lot slower. And um, so like after I had my daughter, instead of me just being able to like get up and walk around, I had to rely on the nurses to help me go to the bathroom, to like do a lot of things. And I was more confined to the bed. I had to call a nurse if I wanted to get up. And you know, you're also hooked up to like all these IVs and stuff. And so you're restricted there. I did not plan to have a natural birth. <laughs> Um, I planned to have just local like pain medication. I did not want to have an epidural, um, but I did not get the choice of any. So let me tell you this little story. I was 38 weeks with my son and I was, had been dilated four centimeters for about a month. <laughs> when you are at a four, you're considered in active labor but I just wasn't budging, wasn't moving. And when I had my son, I ended up switching to a different doctor than I had with my daughter. And it was in a different town. It was um, my midwife. I ended up going to a midwife this time. And she was telling me that, you know, she was concerned because I had my daughter within seven hours. And that was a first baby, which is, that's a really fast labor for a first baby. And so she was concerned with my son that, you know, I may not make it to the hospital. <laughs> so that day I ended up having a membrane sweep. My midwife did a membrane sweep that day. And she basically told me that I should expect to have my baby sometime that day or the next day. Um, so we went ahead and got my daughter with her Nana and um, everything was settled that she was going to stay there. We had her bag packed because we were like, okay, the baby could come today or whatever. On midnight, like I said, I started having contractions and boy, let me tell you, I never experienced contractions like this with my daughter because my water broke. It was a very slow thing. I did not start having contractions until I got the Pitocin until, um, you know, that's when I wanted to have the epidural and all of that. With my son, I started to have contractions a minute apart. I started at midnight and they started off kind of slow and then they progressed to like, hardcore contractions and I tried to relax I was like oh this is probably not it it's probably not a big deal and so I just like let me just take a bath and relax well that made them 
hardcore even worse. So my husband was like, okay, we are going. And I called the hospital and they're like, yes, you need to come in. So I went to the hospital and I'm going in the hospital. And this was literally like what you see on TV. Like <laughs> This one I can attest was like what you see on TV as far as the woman goes in and she's like, oh, you know, screaming. That was me with my son. And the lady at the front wanted me to check in and I'm just like, I cannot sit down. Me <laughs> into like the before you go into labor, they put you in like a separate room to like monitor you. And the whole time I'm there, I am just having contraction after contraction. I swing my hands and I like knocked the nurse's glasses off. Sorry, whoever you are, if you're watching, sweet nurse. I did not mean to do that. <laughs> it was really crazy. I, it was just like the worst pain in my entire life, let me just tell you that. Like, I have just never, so I wanted medicine and I'm like, can you guys give me something? Like, I can't do this, like, it's hurting so bad. Well, they tried to like find a vein to put an IV so they could give me some pain medicine and they can't find a vein. I was dehydrated or whatever, they can't find a vein. And so the midwife comes in and she checks me and she's like, I think I see the head. Like, it's time to push. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh. She's like, like, by the time we get the medicine in and call the anesthesiologist to, like, give you an epidural, you'll be done having this baby. You're doing this. So, with no plan of my own, I had a natural birth. Yeah. My son Salas was born within, like, 30 minutes of me getting to the hospital. Like, it was just ridiculously fast and crazy. And the night that he was born, unlike my daughter, where she was the only baby the whole night, there were 12 babies born that night. So it was just a whirlwind. Okay, so now let's talk about my pros and cons with my natural birth compared to my epidural. Pro number one with having a natural birth is that you feel everything, which to me was a pro because I knew what was happening. I felt my son moving throughout the birth canal. I felt when his head was coming. I was able to tell them like, I think my baby's coming now. They checked me and sure enough, he was coming. So unlike with the epidural where I had to rely on the nurses, this time it was me and I was able to be in full control of what was happening to my body and know when it was time to push. Another pro with a natural birth for me was the recovery. After I had my son, I was able to get up. I was able to take a shower. I was able to feel clean and fresh. And all of that was because I didn't have an IV. I didn't have anything holding me back from, you know, just enjoying uh, the time with my baby and like family being there. So that to me was just a huge pro was I wasn't confined to a bed. I have a couple cons with my natural birth. Number one con is you feel everything, okay? And it hurts, like, mm, it hurts so bad. I don't care how severe your period cramps are, giving birth, mm -mm. It, it literally, I have, this is the way I can explain it. And this is the only way I can explain it. Take a piece of bubble gum that you've chewed and stretch it. That's what it feels like is happening to your insides. So think about that for a minute. I felt like I was dying. Like I literally looked at my husband and I'm like, please take care of Arabella because I just don't know if I'm gonna survive this. <laughs> I was so scared. Um, my pain tolerance is like a zero. So there you go. If that tells you anything, I'm not, I don't do well with pain, but I was able to do it. So going back to my con, you feel everything. Second con that I had after I gave birth naturally, I do not know why this happened. And I don't know if this happens to every woman or certain women. I got the shakes so bad. Like my body was shaking so bad that like when they gave me Silas to hold him, I was scared that I was gonna drop him. And I'm like, are you guys sure I can hold him? Cause I don't feel good. And they would bring me like these heated warm blankets and I was still shaking. So I don't know if it was just like my body, like having adrenaline or what it was. So if you know, leave me a comment down below because I would like to know why I had the shake so bad. With my natural birth, as much as I did not want a natural birth, 
I would absolutely do it again if I ever had the chance to have another baby, which is not happening. But if I did, I would go the natural birth route. Whether you decide to have an epidural or give birth unmedicated naturally, that is your choice. And you know what? Giving birth, whether you have a C-section, an epidural, non-epidural natural birth, you are a superwoman, okay? Because you brought a baby into this world and that is incredible. Don't ever let anyone disregard you. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I am so glad I was able to share this experience with you. It was so fun to be able to think back to like when I gave birth to my children. It just makes me so happy and I was so happy to be able to share my experiences. And if you liked this video or you benefited from it in any way, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and comment down below your experience. Let me know how your birth went. I am so interested to know what experiences you guys had that were different or the same. And I look so forward to seeing you guys at the next video. So don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already so you will not miss my next video.